Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and this week in for repair is another one of my own guitars, the Pink Jaguar. It started its life off as a classic vibe, and it's just become a Frankenstein of experiments and things I've wanted to try from different bridges, different vibratos, different necks, different pickups. But today, I'm finally gonna do this thing the right way from the ground up, as you would have seen from the thumbnail. It's entirely disassembled, which is why I'm not currently holding it. Yeah, it should be a fun process. I've never done the full Jaguar wiring almost from scratch. The people at Holguin Custom, the people that made this harness for me, did most of the hard work for me. However, we're still gonna have to connect everything. I'm gonna be showing you some tips about soldering, some differences between the Japanese vibrato system that was on it before and the American vintage that's going on it, some setup tricks and just things here and there that I've picked up all along the way when it comes to setting up these offset guitars. Without further ado, let's take this into the garage and let's get started. All right, so now we have the guitar completely taken apart. It might look like these electronics are in. They're not. This is a pre-wired kit from Hoagland Wiring in Fernandina Beach in Florida. Uh, we're going to have to do all of this from scratch here. One thing I did like about this guitar from the factory, before I get a little bit more into the pre, somewhat pre-wired kit, it does come grounded in three different spots here. You have one in the neck cavity, you have one in the bridge terminal, and you have another one that goes underneath here, which is pretty cool. Sometimes they'll go inwards towards the actual vibrato assembly and ground in that manner, but this looks like it's just going straight up underneath the post. Well, we have a lot to do here, and there's a few things that I think should be gone over when it comes to the wiring before we address anything else because I did mention it I just kind of glanced over it so you have this right here big old CTS pots one meg on each one with a nice cap braided wiring this is very very well done this is what you get stock you get your baby mini alpha pots the cheap old wiring I mean it is what it is it's like oh well, nowadays it's like a $500 guitar almost but everything about this screams quality you have dual split shafts on this one or solid staff with the volume on the cheaper one that comes with the factory but this will be a very nice upgrade indeed you can use the same knobs that come with it because these will fit right on and you have a little slot there for an allen key so when we're all done we can tighten those back on and reuse those a few other things of note one problem with this guitar happened to be these bridge thimbles a lot of people complain about them if you want to keep the stock Mustang bridge I would highly recommend replacing these bridge thimbles it's pretty easy to do it what you'll want to do is I would buy the ones that are the pure vintage ones I think you can even get them on Amazon if you don't want to deal with reverb or anything like that or reverb obviously is a good place I recommend going to places like uh, Darren Ridley's and Angela they're very good for having parts for offset guitars they actually have a smaller internal radius meaning when the bridge itself is sitting in these posts like so it could still move it's meant to move like that a little bit but with the stock bridge and the stock thimbles the movement is so much that returning back to neutral or you know zero when you're trying to use the vibrato system it becomes a little bit unreliable that's why you'll see some people say uh to use tape around the posts of the bridge itself. The reason is because it is a bigger um, circumference here as far as the diameter with the actual thimbles themselves. So, I got that word salad out. I'm pretty pretty proud of myself. Let's get going. Now, thanks to the people at Hoagland Custom, they did give me this fine wiring diagram. Although, there are colors on it, as you can see. They chose not to have the actual cables colored, even though it says red. Okay, whatever. We're just going to have to deal with that. This shouldn't be too big of a deal as far as the wiring goes. It can, it's just, you take your time, you double check your work, and you go from there. So, to begin with here, these three, as I already mentioned before, these are just grounds. So, these are going to go where the pickups are going to ground as well. Right now, I'm just going to kind of put them out of the way. Okay, real quick tip when it comes to the iron, the way I like to do it is, I turn it up to maximum, 
let it heat up for a minute. Okay, once it's heated up, I turn it down a little bit. Make sure that your sponge is wet. We're going to tin it. If you're not familiar with what tinning is, it's adding a little bit of the solder to the tip. Very nice. Now what we're going to do is heat this guy up a little bit on the side. Add a little bit. Just a little. That's it. Do the same thing here. Let it heat up. Just a little. This will help prevent against a cold solder joint. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with the wires. We're going to tin those as well. So let's wipe off. Make sure it's a nice clean tip. No need to use a top. Good. Perfect. Now firing the diagram here, the red, which is coming from the actual jack, is going to go up here. The white is going to go right next to it. So let's do the red one first. Same thing, we're just going to preheat it. Now bear in mind here, the iron now is down to three. When I'm not using it, I like to turn it down a little bit more. So that should be those connections to that. Next, we're going to have the rhythm circuit. Okay, so we're going to ground that one right there. Now, the last thing we'll need to do with this circuit, as far as any soldering, is right there, I believe. That is going to be where the neck pickup hot is going to connect. But we're getting there. So now knowing that this is going to have to go back this way, might as well start feeding it through now. I really wish this cable was a little bit longer, honestly. Yeah, you see how little room I have with this? This is not what, this is not what you want to see. So already what you've learned is not everything always goes to exactly plan. The nice kit, but that's that's that short is really a problem. I'm actually going to save that to the end. I'm going to save myself the headache of this. So let's go ahead, get our neck pickup. Because outside of that, the main main potatoes of this is actually done. So let's put this. So this has already been tinned. What I'm going to do is I'll do the same thing. Warm up. Beautiful. So now the rhythm circuit's done. I can tell you one thing, this is going to be a really tight fit with all of these wires coming through this this cavity here. I could see where it was advantageous to have the cheaper non-braided wire in this instance. All right. Again, everything will get moved back in due time. In due time. The one tricky part, I don't know if you're noticing this, but trying to make sure that wires specifically avoid each other just to not cause overlap it's hard especially with the complex wiring like a jaguar here so we're almost home i promise all right so right there perfect
let it sit. Beautiful. So our rhythm circuit's totally wired. This is the first thing I'm gonna use the screwdriver to tighten, just so that things will be somewhat solid and then I'll know exactly how much lead I have here to get things done. Now the last ground wire, this is for the bridge pickup. Come on buddy, you can do it. This is gonna be tough. There's not a lot of room. Got it, all right. Whew. So. We're not looking so bad. Now this guy, the last thing we need to solder here before the ground um, is this guy. But I'm going to make sure I can get to all the grounds prior to that. I'm going to put that black, which is a ground right here, on this side. As you can see, this way, this white wire is kind of on its own little path, so to speak. And then all the black wires will go in the other direction like so see it's all about separation and wire management especially in tight spaces like this uh you'll notice there's not technically enough room here but once we actually get this connected i will have enough jimmy room to be able to do this actually we're going to do that dead last Let's go ahead and do all these ground wires. Now, since we've elected to opt for the grounds first, let's go ahead. It is getting hot. I apologize. I'm sweating like a mad dog. Let me clean that off real quick. Don't want any of that. Okay. Heat the pot. Nice and warm. All right, you might be wondering what the hell happened here? How did we go from, you know, nothing attached to pretty much everything already assembled as far as the electronics go and the pick guard? The battery died, and there was so much excess noise outside, I did not hear it click off, so I really do apologize for that. I'm not sure how much the camera will have gotten. Uh, I do have a few notes, though. We were worried about the white lead that was coming out here from the pickup selector not being long enough to reach. What I ended up doing was patching in a second cable. I had an extra jack here, so I cut off about that much from there. Used a heat shrink wrap to connect them together and then just put it in to the tone pot right there. I checked the electronics, everything does make the noises it's supposed to make when the switches are aligned and there's no excess buzzing or noises. Uh, bridge, seat, like we said, it's moving a little bit, but it's not absolutely crazy. We're all good to go. The next thing we have to do before we can put this neck on though, is we gotta talk about the vibratos. We got two of them here. On the right is the Japanese vibrato. On the left is the American Vintage Vibrato. You can see that the arm is straighter on the American Vintage where it has a little kink in it on the main Japan one, but that's not all here. I did take some pictures, and we'll be seeing those on the stream here. But one reason I prefer the American Vintage is because of the angle that it comes up at. I find it's a lot easier when I'm playing because it sits up higher versus that. It sits up a little bit less. You can see them back to back. I'll try them at the camera, but it actually makes a significant difference in playing for me as far as the feel goes. But both are quality units. Uh, both of them have the lock, which is pretty cool. 
and you have brass on the Japanese one where it just looks like stainless steel on the American one on the back of it. Very, very nice pieces. Either one of them. I just prefer the arm angle on the American one. There's really not too huge of a difference between the two of them, if you ask me. So, all right, let's get this guy in here. And I do have a white tip that we will be putting on. That's disgusting with the H one. So. Okay, all good. Last thing I want to mention here, this was a pick guard. I just bought it as an experiment to see if I would like the mint green on the shell pink. Turns out, I really, really do. This was $10, I believe, off of Amazon. It's not the best fit. I mean, there's a clear gap right there. There's a little bit of an issue here. But, I mean, for a $10 pick guard, from, from far away, absolutely nobody's going to notice, and I guess it does the job decently. One day later down the road, maybe next string change, uh, I will put on something like a WD that I know will fit it absolutely perfectly, and they're right up from the road for me, so I could always take a car right up and get this done. But it is time. We're going to put the shim in, connect the neck, and then we're going to set this thing up. Now, the shim we're going to start with is a Stumac 0.5. And you might be thinking, well, what happened to the top of it? Why is it missing? I like to cut around these so that when it does sit in, there's not really any excess sticking out from the back of it. Aesthetically, it drives me nuts. And even right there, yeah, I see you. I see you. There's a little bit. So let me get some scissors. A little bit of a haircut. And the top here. And then just wheel it off. Round it. That should do it. And it did. Alright. When I'm setting up a Jaguar or a Jazzmaster for the first time, I do prefer to start with that point five. That way it gives me a really good parameter of how things are going to be working out. If need be, I could always add more to it or switch it out for a higher degree of shim, maybe a one. Or if it needs to be a little too much, maybe I don't need it, which is very rarely the case. I go down to a 0.25 or just no shim whatsoever. But I want this thing to have low action the higher up the frets that I go. Let's get the neck on this guitar. This neck is from a 2019 Fender Traditional 60s. Jaguar. Ironically enough, I'm filming this on Halloween. You're going to see on the picture, this was stamped Halloween 2019. I thought that was kind of cool today. I received it. Now tell me this does not look a billion times better than it did with that Palfaro neck. Nothing against it, you guys. And I know right now there's a thread on the gear page where somebody's trying to explain to me why people like dark rosewood because it just looks damn good. Ain't nothing more to it than that. Just accept it. It just does but i only had a few minutes after setting up the bridge to really sit and play with this thing and unfortunately that's all the time i am going to have today because i'm filming this on halloween as you can see it's still light outside we got to go out take the little one have some fun it's all about the family before i get going two things first of all don't worry you're going to be seeing a lot more of this guitar and you might be asking why did i do this why did I go out of my way to get a Japanese neck that was not available on its own? I had to purchase a whole nother guitar and I'm selling the other one as a parts caster on Reverb right now. Honestly, I've been talking to you guys about consolidating. I've been talking to you guys about not having things that I don't need. The Green Jaguar, I really, really like that guitar. It's a great guitar. I'm never going to sell this one because I bought it for my kid on Christmas years ago, yada, yada, yada. I don't need to. So I wanted to put this one in as good a condition that I could make absolutely no sacrifices, have everything pretty much to the T, minus the pick guard, how I would want things to go, and just call it a day with the Fender Jaguars, well, for the foreseeable future, and sell the green one. The second thing is I wanted to lay out a list of all the parts that are on this guitar. We do have the American Vintage Thimbles. We do have the Stay Tram Bridge. We do have the American Vintage Vibrato System, the Fralins, the Hoagland Custom, entire three-piece kit. How cool is that? That if you're confident enough to be able to do the soldering on your own, 
This is an instant upgrade. My only kind of complaint would be the lead that was coming out from the switches. The white lead was way too short. There was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to get that done. However, in a pinch, you find these things and you make do with what you have. Fortunately, I do have a lot of other spare parts, including wiring that I was able to get the job done with. This neck is amazing. I measured it in case you're curious. It's 0.86 at the first fret one at the 12th so very very beefy indeed i'm happy with it it is what it is as far as what i'm gonna be playing for a jaguar for the foreseeable future but i still can't believe that the neck on this guitar was stamped halloween of 2019 and i received it on halloween of 2022 very spooky indeed but I gotta go. We're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. I hope you have a great day on this Tuesday or whatever day that you're watching this. If you don't watch these, that the day that they release on. Let me know in the comments if you found any of this helpful. Again, I do apologize that the camera died and I didn't hear it. It was very loud out there. Comment, subscribe, like, and I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.